Hey, welcome to Art with Ian. Today we're talking about drawing loose. That's coming up next. All right, so today we are talking about staying loose. This is a really important topic, something that I think a lot of artists need to work on and prove. Uh, one, one of the things that you see a lot of in artist is, is always trying to get a perfect line. They're always trying to get this somehow perfect, you know, and you'll see like they'll do a, a line and then, oh, that's not what I want. Oh, that's not what I want. Oh, that's not what I want. <clears throat> and that's okay if you're trying to get like some kind of really am amazing line art done and you've already got your design down and now you're trying to go in and do these perfect line art passes even then you lose a lot of the life of the of the drawing by, by doing that but when you're designing and you're searching for your design just staying really loose you know thinking about big shapes and and not worrying what your actual drawing looks like you know you, you shouldn't be laboring over those things when you're designing because you're taking all of the energy from your design the from your the place where you would be thinking of design and pouring it into lines which have no meaning until you have a good design so here are a couple examples of some very you know loose and quick sketches i did and you can see if i zoom in here you can see how loose and sketchy this all is uh, and i do the way i work is i do like one pass um very loose just almost it's almost like scribbling, but I'm not scribbling because I know what I'm, my, I have an agenda. So I'm not just scribbling. I'm thinking of all the shapes. I'm thinking of what I'm trying to get down, but I'm, I'm detaching myself from caring about it so that if I need to, I can throw it away. If the design isn't going where I want it to go, I just want to not care. I don't want to feel like I just spent 15 minutes on this thing. You know, I want it to be quick. And then if I do decide I like it, I bring the opacity down and I clean it up and I do, you know, I tighten it up enough so that I can now see, you know, see a clear version of my design and then I can go to paint. So basically these, these are, you know, I've written down some of the hard, fast ta uh, tactics, you know, techniques for loosening up your drawings. Number one is have an idea. If you have no idea what you're going to draw, it's going to be really hard to be loose because you're, you know, again, you've, you're pouring energy into a place where it doesn't need to be, it should have already been put before you even start drawing. So, for example, this guy here, when I started drawing this figure, I was like, I want to draw a guy and I want him to have weapons. And so then I thought a little more about it. I looked at some references of you know, I went to Google and typed in man with swords or man with weapons or whatever. And I just looked at a bunch of pictures and I started filling my head with kind of how would you stand if you want to look aggressive. I want him to be aggressive. I want him to be a bit hunched. I don't want him to just be standing there all static. <clears throat> so I'm starting to build a little visual library as I get, as I kind of put my idea together. So, you know, have an idea, use reference. Then, really, this next point is really important. Draw from your shoulder. Don't draw all super tight. Don't get in there and and just, you know, be like drawing from your fingers. You know, you feel like you have control when you kind of do that, right? Like you're drawing with your fingers. But you have control for about a centimeter, maybe half an inch or, you know, whatever. And then you don't have control. Then you're stuck and you have to stop. So when you're designing, you want to be able to move. You want to, <clears throat> if you don't feel this muscle here moving or the, the bone, you know, the sh your shoulder, your rot rotator cuff, if you don't feel that moving at all, you should start <clears throat> bringing the energy up your arm into your shoulder when you draw or try to. It's it's hard at first, especially if you've draw your whole life, you've kind of drawn that way where you're trying to control everything from your fingers and your wrist. It can be tough to, to switch over, especially if you're working digitally and you have a relatively small tablet. You're thinking, well, how do I draw from my shoulder? That would be like, I'm drawing, like, I'm covering the whole page. And, and if that is 
the case, maybe try practicing on paper and, and, you know, a bigger piece of paper and actually get that feeling. And then slowly but surely, you'll be able to transition that into your digital work. Uh, be purposeful, not careful. Again, you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be um, careful, like I was mentioning, but you also don't want to be completely nonsense. You don't want to just scribble for the sake of scribbling. Those, <clears throat> I have seen, excuse me, uh, my throat's a little messed up. I have seen some artists who literally do scribble. They They know what they're going for, and they kind of scribble out some some really, you know, interesting stuff, and then they start to connect it and they make sense of it. Now that's that's a pretty uncommon thing. My suggestion would be to be more, not fully scribbling, you know, thinking of the shapes you want. Like if you're drawing a figure, draw the, uh, the be kind of drawing the shape of the rib cage and the hips and the legs and arms and shoulders and everything as you go. All right, on to the next one. Stay objective, which I, what I mean by that is no one to scrap your design. Just don't try to polish turds. You may have heard this from before from other artists or, or instructors or whatever, and this is crucial. If you, if you spend an hour fixing a bad design that would, uh, a new, a fresh take would have taken you 10 minutes, it's like, was that design ever worth the extra 50 minutes you just put into trying to salvage it? It really wasn't. And also, it just destroys the joy of drawing. Drawing should be fun. <clears throat> it shouldn't be something that you labor over. I mean, when you're practicing, yes, it's, it's practice. But it should, you should enjoy the feeling of putting lines down on paper. You, and as soon as you feel like everything you draw requires your full commitment, it takes it puts so much pressure on you take off the pressure like it's it's okay to do bad drawings in fact most of your drawings in your sketchbook and stuff they probably should be bad drawings there's you're not getting nearly as much mileage in your practice if everything you draw you go you fill the whole process you sketch and then you fully render everything you ever draw like this early phase, this design sketch, loose drawing phase, it's the hardest part about drawing, uh, having a good design sense or, or you know, figuring out what it is you're going to do. Rendering and all that later stuff, I mean, yeah, it's technique too, but it's there's so much less actual work, like artistic work that goes into a lot of that. It's more like, okay, do I understand how light works? Yes, I do. Okay, so... You know, and you get into all that stuff, but getting a good initial design down or character art down and stuff like that, it, it, you should be practicing just that. Just do a sketch, move on to the next one. Sketch, sketch, sketch. Try to do, you know, 50 in a day instead of just one that you take to a render. And then <clears throat> that kind of leads into six, which is practice with patience. And... This can be frustrating, especially when you see all over YouTube, like people with these clickbait titles, like learn how to draw fast. Like there's no fast. There's no fast. It's you just have to do a lot of this for years and years and years. And any honest artist who's not just trying to get you to click on their video because with a cheap title is going to tell you the same thing. And that is it takes years. It takes years. I mean, I'm still, I've been drawing my whole life and I'm still not where I want to be. And I never will be because that's the hunger to improve that you should have. Uh, and it's just, it's going to take a lot of time, you know. So practice with patience. Don't set high expectations for yourself. Set expectations, but don't make them too high. Don't, don't build expectations that will just drive you into frustration, depression, um, and comparing yourself to pros and thinking, why am I not there? It's like, well, they're pros. They, I mean, they've done so many more hours of drawing than you. Like when you were playing your favorite video game, guarantee they were drawing. It's just the way of it. So, you know, put in your time and be real serious about it and you'll start to see improvements and then go back and look at your sketchbook from a year ago, you know, um, 
and you'll see it if you practice you will see massive improvements your line quality will get better you'll stop caring so much about each drawing you do as if it's some kind of baby you know and you, you'll really see those huge improvements happening if you put in the time and everything that's worth doing requires your time and effort and, and energy so if you want to be good at art that's you know that's the way of it so anyway I hope you got something out of this video I hope that you will go on and and think about some of these points that I've made here and take some of that pressure off yourself and not worry about the quality of you know your sketches and stuff uh, from like a visual standpoint that they're not for other people they're for you and so treat them like they're for you and and don't worry about all your lines being perfect and all that stuff just worry about your design and your flow and your the feeling you're getting from drawing bring some joy back into it all right that's all for this one i'll see you guys on the next one if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends Make sure you ring that bell for notifications of future videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one.